Hello everybody. Today we are going to look at the internals of an operational amplifier. We left off talking about differential amplifiers. So let's start with that. And just to keep things a little bit interesting, we're going to start with maybe something a little different. So I'm going to draw uh, an upside down, if you will, diff amp that uses some PNPs. Right, no reason to always stick with the NPN transistors. So I'm, up here I'm going to have a positive power supply. Down here we're going to have a negative power supply. And then our inputs, it's going to draw those coming back over here. Now, with this circuit, right, we have a standard differential amplifier with a simple resistor up here to establish the current source driving down. That's our tail current coming down. It's going to split as we talked about. Now let's take an output here. What I'm going to do is add some more circuitry. Now this is highly simplified. Don't try to build this circuit in lab or simulate it. Um, we're missing some things, but what I want to do is add a voltage gain stage and then an output stage. So for a voltage gain stage, I'm just going to draw a single NPN over here. And then I'm going to make this the direct coupled drive stage for a class B. Right, so I've got a couple of compensation diodes over here. And ordinarily we would probably bias these, instead of using these resistors, we would probably bias this with um, current mirror. And we'd probably use a current mirror down here for an active load to give us more gain. But this is here just to kind of show how this is all going to work. So here's my class B coming out like yay. Okay, so diff amp first. Then we have a nice voltage gain stage. We, like I said, we'll probably also have level shifters, maybe more than one stage here. Um, most likely there would be a little cap right there, which I'll explain momentarily. And then finally, we have this class B output stage. So what do we get from each of these things? Well, obviously we get the differential multiplication on the first stage, right? The whole diff amp idea. The second version, second uh, part, gives us more voltage gain. This capacitor will actually shape the frequency response of the whole system. And then finally, the class B gives us some current gain and allows us to drive lower impedance loads because it has a low Z out. Now, this whole thing, right, in reality will probably take, oh, maybe a couple dozen 30 transistors, something like that, to actually build this thing up. But if you look at it, you discover it only has five connections to the outside world. You've got the two inputs, positive and negative power supply, and the output. So we're going to take this whole thing. We're going to say, this is our amplifier. In other words, two inputs. And one of these would be in phase, right? We'll call this a plus input. One of these is out of phase with the output. And then we have our positive DC for the bias and our negative DC for the bias. Put that whole thing on one chip and you've got yourself an op amp. That's what an operational amplifier is. Now there's a lot of variations on the theme. You know, I happen to draw an upside down uh, PNP diff amp. There could be an NPN. It could be 
uh, Darlington pear, could be JFETs, lots of things going on here. Um, we could have, probably will have, some kind of current limit on these output transistors so that if we accidentally short the output, nothing blows up. That's, you know, not a very nice thing. We could design this to run on very high power supplies, you know, over 100 volts. We could design it with very heavy duty output sections so that it could deliver tens of amps of current. Many possibilities. But our average typical sort of run of the mill op amp would have the following sort of specifications. Right, we would have a ZN that's probably at least a mega ohm. In other words, looking into each one of these input pins. Okay, so typically we'd put our little pluses and minuses right in here for our two inputs. So each one of those we'd be looking at at least a meg. You know, if we had a JFET in there, we might be looking at 10 to the 12 ohms for DC input resistance on this thing, low frequency input impedance. The output impedance because of the follower is probably fairly low, um, probably in the range of, you know, 50 ohms, 75 ohms, something like that. So you're not going to drive a loudspeaker, you know, an 8 ohm loudspeaker directly, but other sorts of circuits will, will uh, have very little loss when we connect up to it. In other words, if we have something with a, you know, a couple of K ohm input impedance, this is going to work great. Power supplies. Typically, these things are designed to run on plus and minus 15 volts. Although they could run on plus and minus 12, plus and minus 9. Plus and minus 18 is typically the max. You can't get beyond that without damaging the device. All right, so what kind of output are we looking at? Because of the class B, we're going to be able to swing almost to the power supply, just like a class B amplifier. You know, the saturation is only going to be maybe two diode drops off this. So your, your V out, your clipping, right, is probably going to be somewhere around 13, 14 volts. So I'll just say, you know, eh, 13 and a half, cut the difference. What about the current? So your maximum load current, again, this depends a lot on the design, but typically we're going to be looking at something in the range of 20 to 40 milliamps for your average op amp. And so now we have kind of an idea of um, you know, where this thing is operating. It's got a high input impedance, low output impedance. It's a good voltage amplifier. We can get 10 plus volts out of it you know, tens of milliamps of current. What kind of gain do we get out of this whole thing? I mean, I've got gain, I've got gain, I've got gain. Like I said, we might have multiple stages in here. Well, at low frequencies, the gain on this thing is huge. We could be talking 100,000, 200,000, 300,000. In other words, order of magnitude, you're probably talking 10 to the fifth or more. All right, 100,000 for a, for a voltage gain, huge voltage gain. What about uh, physical packaging on something like this? Well, we can get these, because they're going to be fairly small, we can get these in small can-type things, like um, TO5-type case. It would sort of look like a small signal transistor, but you'd have a bunch of extra leads coming out of it. Uh, very popular, at least in, uh, you know, in, a, in a lab, would be an 8-pin mini dip. So these look just like, you know, the digital logic chips dual inline package, except you have just eight leads. Still numbered the same way. In other words, that's pin one, working back to pin eight, and you would have an op amp in there. They also come in duals. You can get 8-pin duals, and whether well, they'll share their two power supplies, right? So you got one, two, and then three and three for the uh, input output connections and you can get quads so you have four op amps in one 14 pin package okay all right surface mount you bet you know um in scale probably about that big so you might have uh like an so two three uh 
case style for it. That's a possibility. So there's lots of different things you might find here. Usually the case styles are indicated on the part number. So you'll have a sort of a generic number, for example. Uh, you might find a sort of a very popular, long-lived op amp from the 70s. Still use them. Is the MU-A741. Now the MU-A is the manufacturer's code. That used to be Fairchild. But you could also find an LM741. Um, you know, and, and on, and on, and on, and on. And then there'll be a letter back here that will indicate, for example, uh, a temperature grade. You know, is it um, a mill spec? Is it a commercial spec? What is it? And then, like I said, you might have other letters back here that indicate the case style. So generally, these are going to come in three temperature ranges. You have um, military spec, which is the widest range of temperature. Then you have sometimes referred to as an industrial or automotive spec, which is a bit wider, you know, not as extreme, because after all, you know, if you're going to build something for the military, you know, it might be, uh, uh, you know, in a, in a jet fighter or something like that. So um, it gets pretty cold in the stratosphere. Um, a car, on the other hand, you know, it's not going to get that cold. However, it's not going to be like, uh, you know, residential commercial kind of stuff where you know something's going to be in your house like your home stereo how cold is it going to get how warm is it going to get you know what kind of range of, of temperatures does your tv see it's not very wide right so that's the narrowest of the three your car on the other hand you know could be sitting outside in the middle of winter um you know in upstate new york in maine and in, in uh, you know minnesota okay it's going to get to 20 below right fahrenheit of course, it could also be sitting out in the parking lot, you know, in Arizona in the middle of the summer. So, yeah, it could be well over 100 degrees. Um, so that's certainly much more stringent than your, your home stereo would be or your TV, but it's not as bad as, like I said, maybe a military thing or something that's going to go out into space. You know, we have some electronics for a space probe or something like that. So typically those three grades, and as you can expect, the wider the temperature range, the more expensive the part's going to be. All right. So what do we do with this little beastie? Particularly because we have this crazy high gain. Well, let's take a look at uh, a couple of simple examples. So I'm going to take my op amp. And I'm going to hook up just a couple of voltages to it. And... You know, maybe a simple load out here like a 10K ohm load. Power supplies, I'm going to use our typical plus and minus 15 volt power supplies. Very often on schematics, we don't draw power supplies, just like you probably wouldn't draw them in a digital logic circuit. You know, you want more of a functional kind of thing. So we might leave those off on a schematic, but obviously you have to have them. All right, so let's say we put in... Uh, you know, 1 volt DC, I'll start with DC here, 0 volts DC on my two inputs. And let's say that we have this gain of 10 to the fifth. What does the output look like? Well, because of the differential amplifier, the, the gain equation looks like this. V out is the gain times V plus minus V minus. Right? We saw this with the diff amp. So plug the numbers in. Got 10 to the fifth, V plus is a volt, V minus is zero. So you get 10 to the fifth volts. No, you don't. How are you going to get 10 to the fifth volts? How are you going to get 100,000 volts when you only have 15 volt power supplies? You're not going to. What happens? It clips. So this will, in fact, clip at. I'll just use our values over here, 13 and a half volts positive. So that's all you're going to see is a, is a DC level sitting up there at 13 and a half volts. All right, so, you know, let's change them, right? Let's say that uh, we have 2 volts for the plus input, and we have uh, 6 volts, both positive, for the minus input. What do we get now? 
I got 10 to the fifth. V plus is two volts. V minus is six volts. All right, so that's gonna give us a negative four. So we've got negative four E5. 400,000 volts. No, it's going to clip at minus 13.5 volts, All right? Okay, you can see what's happening here. Even if you had a tiny, tiny little difference, right? even if you had, uh, you know, let's say V plus is a volt and V minus is 1.001 .001 volts, you know, it's a millivolt larger, what ends up happening? Well, you end up with a negative millivolt times 10 to the fifth. You're still going to go into clipping. So what we really have when all is said and done is a binary output, sort of a digital binary output. We only have one of two possible states, positive clip, negative clip. Now, if you're thinking, well, what if I put the identical voltages on, like one volt and one volt or minus two volts and minus two volts, wouldn't you get zero here? And then your V out would be zero. Well, on paper you would, but as we discussed with the diff amp, there are internal offsets and those little tiny offsets the, the lack of perfection in this thing will be enough to make the output go to positive or negative saturation you're not going to see anything in between so we can describe this very simply by saying that if v plus is bigger than v minus v out goes to positive v saturation so clipping, like in our case, at plus 13 and a half. On the other hand, if V plus is less than V minus, V out goes to minus V sat, right? Minus 13 and a half. Now, if they're equal, right, theoretically, if you had a perfect device, you'd get zero, but you don't. And you don't really know, you know, just by looking at the op amp, you don't know which way it's going to go. You know, which transistor has a higher beta? Who knows, right? So it's going to go one way or the other. Now, as a result of this, we have this sort of analog input, this changing possible input, but only a two-state output. So we're going kind of from an analog world into a simple binary digital world on the other side. That application we refer to as a comparator. Oops. Right? So what is a comparator? It compares two inputs. If one is bigger than the other, we get a positive. If the other case is, is uh, enforced, we get the negative. Application. You could make a little resistive bridge network like this. Let's Put this on our plus and minus positive power supplies. Now I'll take my op amp and I will hook up my two inputs. What I'm going to do with one of these resistors, like maybe this one, I'll make this a sensing resistor. In other words, it would be something like a thermistor, right? The resistance is a function of temperature. Or I might use a resistive photo cell. The resistance will depend on how much light is hitting it. And what I can do now is test for a certain level, right? So um, let's say we had a negative temperature coefficient on this uh, thermistor, right? Negative temperature coefficient. So that means the resistance goes down as temperature goes up. And let's say initially that uh, we have a case that this voltage set up by this voltage divider is less than the voltage set up by this voltage divider. So what do I have? I have a smaller voltage on the V plus than I do on the V minus. My output would be negative V sat. Logically, it would be low. Now, as temperature rises, this resistance decreases. So the voltage divider makes this voltage at this node go up. 
at some point it's going to be bigger than the voltage over here and now you have v plus bigger than v minus and you get a high output right a positive vsat so you essentially have this temperature sensing circuit when we get above a threshold this logic shifts what do i do with that i could set off an alarm because something's too hot i could turn off a heating coil i could turn on a fan you know it all depends on what we're actually sensing over here right same thing if i had a photo cell if the light level gets too high you know we can do something or you could change the uh, the orientation of this right put the cell down here and get the opposite sort of action so it all depends on what i put in here for a sensor um, so i could sense light i could sense uh, humidity i could sense um, temperature strain there's a bunch of things that we could come up with but we have this simple sort of high low kind of output now granted this is not uh, let's say ttl compatible but you could come up with a little circuit to to take this you know plus and minus 13 and a half and turn it into uh, you know zero to five or you know zero to 12 or something if you're using cmos and we can even configure this this uh, circuit a little bit differently to sort of optimize the comparator function so even though we can do this with a plain old vanilla op amp there are in fact circuits op amp circuits that are uh, specially designed to be behave perfectly well as comparators okay lots of good applications for this if that's all you could do with an op amp we'd be done this would be the last video right and op amp books would be really really thin obviously there's a lot more we can do and that's where we're going